space one of the things which you want to talk about um, is been to look at for example con um, in the Kenyan context we have just had devolution and implementing devolution is not been an easy road but there have been countries where they've already started the process where we are seeing women already actualizing the space and actually utilizing that space to become better and then making that space become a space where it is women-friendly, women-centric, and also where youth are able to participate. So how do we learn from these other countries to make sure that the quota which we have entrenched in our constitution is actually made to be policy and not just a, a written statement in that our constitution? Do we think that right from the village unit where there are women also working at the village unit where devolution in Kenya is supposed to be working, how are they ensured that they can make demands to the highest level of parliament and ensure that those demands are met? It didn't come on a silver plate. Women had to be there to make their, their voice noted and they used so when we were mobilizing ourselves, the women and the youth came together and we demanded we ought to be there. And of course, under the Constituent Assembly, the five youth were nominated and the women representatives were nominated to participate in the Constituent Assembly. And that was a breakthrough. We broke the ice and when the women got there, during the const constitutional amendments and constitution making, they made sure that in this constitution, which we were going to adopt and which would leave the test of time, that the women at no time should ever, never be left out. They should be there so that they can echo certain salient issues which concern them. And that's how we went through the affirmative action. And he has worked all this through. I started as a youth MP in 1994. I was elected among the five youth to go to, par to parliament, by then it was National Resistance Council, and now I graduated to, to the woman seat. Yes, because as I stated, the youth, the youth stage is a transitional stage. After certain years, you have to graduate definitely. You will not remain a youth. But of course, because of that mobilization with the youth and the women, these are specifically interest groups and people with disabilities. Then I told them, but I can graduate now, I'm a woman, let me join this other group. And then as you are there, the youth, we are also there, and then we see how we can push forward our agenda. And that's how we managed to make it. The stories that keep going around that uh, women's presence in parliament and in government in Rwanda is high because many men died in the genocide, um, or even that uh, our leadership uh, ha has adopted these positive policies because they, they have learned from the suffering of genocide. I think those are excuses uh, that detractors will always find, and it is not true. How did we get let me start by saying again that the 64% representation in parliament in Rwanda, women's representation in parliament, we are celebrating it, but we are cele not celebrating it as a Rwandan achievement only. I think this is a celebration for the women of Africa. In 2003, we had to change the constitution. And there was a lot of work done Women really, they realized, having suffered through the genocide, they realized the effects of bad governance. And they decided that this was not going to happen again. You should have seen the women, how they mobilized, how they went to the grassroots, they went everywhere 
to train other women and men on g to ensure that we get a just constitution. And in this justice, in this inclusive constitution, there was affirmative action that says there must be at least minimum 30% women representations in all levels of government. But as a youth, because for you, you got into parliament and a, a female youth in South Sudan at the age of 24. And what is it that you've done to make that quota of the youth? I would love to start uh, with the, the representation of the women in the country before I should come to the youth representation. Uh, in 2005, after the CP was signed, uh, our good leader, Dr. John Gara, he decided that the women should be giving a representation of 25% at the all level of the government. By then, we were together, we were one nation with Sudan in 2005, and that action was putting into constitution so that it become a law. At all level of the government, representation of women, it's 25%. No matter whatever position is there, women should be there. Uh, to my own case, being a young woman in parliament and a youth at the same time, you know, this thing is that from your own political party. Because I do believe without having a party, you will not come to the power of a political position. You must come, you must come from your certain political party. In our case, we have a SPLM, Sudan People Liberation Movement, which is a ruling party in South Sudan. This is my party. Uh, we do our selection at the level of the party. In that uh, level, we select women and young women at the same time. Because as ho my colleague said before, you start at the level of being young and tomorrow you will be an old. Therefore, my party selected me to be representative of women at my constituency. And I went through elections, and you know how hard this election is. We try, you have so many challenges that you are a young person, there is elder people can lead, there is what, what. But what you have to use is what is the card of your party. You don't care no matter young you are, you are five years old, 10 years old, but your party has selected you, and your party has a reason to select you. Every month, Women leaders make seminars to explain, to encourage other women to be in political parties. And those seminars, in those seminars, men are invited to hear what is said there. And now we can say that we have reached a, a level now we are using men to explain the gender issue. Other thing that uh, I can say, the selected women are not selected for joking. They are there for working, for serving public, especially women. You can ask how. The president cannot put a woman in any place without consulting a woman's league. If it is a place of women, he go, he ask, please give me a woman. And the uh, president of women's league give, select a woman which is fit to go there. And once he's selected, she knows that she must work. She's not going there for joking because she knows that behind her, many eyes are looking what she's doing. If you are not succeeded in, in what you are doing, because you go with an agenda, if you don't succeed, you come back and you are replaced by another. And once you are replaced, you understand that to come back to that place is a problem. 
That's why before going, you must think, am I going there to work or if you are not sure that you are going to work, you say, no, I don't go. Could you please tell us, Sadia, that, for example, how in Somalia and Somaliland have you managed to dismantle the issue of patriarchy to ensure that for your case, the women's agenda is able to sit? Because one of the challenges we've had, which we see also in Kenya, is the issue of clanism. So that when you are able to participate in politics, it's your clan which is supposed to put you there. And if you don't have the biggest clan, sorry, you're not there. So how is it that you're able to deconstruct this to be able to participate in the political space? But I, I agree with you, Kota, is that is space. We need to have that space. We need to change the attitudes. We are the role models. We should be that role models that actually the young woman go, follows up. We should be the role models that people who see that we think more seriously on issues of health, education, hygiene, Women are more serious in terms of looking the social problems of the nation than men. And I think they, it is, we have every right to be there. Thank you. One of the things that I have come to celebrate about quotas is also their influence in the parliament. Once you get in, it is the same quota that helps you to sit in leadership. Uh, we do have a deputy speaker who is a woman. We do have a deputy majority leader who is a woman. We do have, I think, about nine women in the House Business Committee. We do have five chairs of committees who are women. We do have another five uh, chairs who are vice, uh, who, five women who are vice chairs. So I have found the quota helpful both during the campaign and especially now uh, within the, the, the parliamentary system. Otherwise, again, I think if there was no quota, the seat that I vied on, if there wasn't the new constitution and if there wasn't a gender quota, I would have taken, I think, another 20, 30 years to be allowed to get into politics. Uh, it is a man's world. It is a male field. And even when I contested, it's just that I wasn't threatening anybody at all. I was not trying to grab a seat from a man. So then they didn't have to stop me. But if you are trying to grab a seat from them, uh, you would be in a lot of trouble. So this particular phase of five years, we have to work so hard. We in the women representative seats are completely aware that if we fail, we fail women leadership in this country. So we are completely aware that we are the test, we are the barometer, we are the indicator. So we will do our best to show that women can lead so that in 2017 they can allow us to vie for governor or not allow us, we will fight for the governorship, we will fight for senate and we will fight for more members. Thank you. Mm -hmm.